Welcome to another video coverage of This Week in Rails, I'm Dave Kumira and today we have Emmanuel bringing us the updates. This Week in Rails is a weekly newsletter that goes out and I simply provide the video coverage of it, but if you would like to receive your own copy, you can go to world.hey.com forward slash this.week.n.rails. So let's dive right in. And for the first item, allow querying by the whole record for composite query constraints. And I think this one is best explained by the example. So if you have a blog post which has many comments, you can have a query constraint on the blog ID and the blog post ID. And then when you go to find a set of comments, you can then find all of the blog posts that are then associated with those particular comments. So it's almost like an inverse search. And it's one of those things where you never really even think about until you have to do something like that. And so this one's really cool. However, do take note that it's not fully implemented yet. So if you have associations that are a belongs to, a has one or has many through, then those aren't covered yet. And the next one is the active record finder methods find support for composite primary key values. And this is an interesting one. And honestly, it's not one that I've had to use much, probably because I usually just scope in whatever querying I'm doing. So for example, if I have an organization and if I want to find all the users for that organization, I already have the organization ID or that organization record. And so then I would just chain in the users, which would then scope in all the users that belong to the organization. However, this change is allowing for the composite primary keys. And essentially that's where you have two different columns that are acting as your primary key. And there's actually a pretty great article about the composite primary keys in Rails, which I'll link to in the show notes. And it's one that I would highly recommend you reading if you are going down this road. And for the next item, use Thor for built-in restart task. And this one's going to be really great because I remember way back when we used to run Rake for everything, and then we slowly transitioned into using the Rails for everything. So a Rails DB migrate instead of a Rake DB migrate. And this is one of those cases where I'm probably not going to use this for a long time, simply because my muscle memory is so used to typing the touch temp restart, which would then trigger Puma to restart the Rails application. But this is great because it is now allowing us to then call this outside of a Rails application directory. And if we look at the change log for this one, it seems simple enough where basically the meat of it is simply just touching that temp restart. And so while this one isn't a huge change, I do think for newcomers who are wanting to restart their Rails application, they would probably just quit out the application and then type Rails server again to bring it back up. And if this is in the documents in the rate commands, when you run something like Rails help, then hopefully they would see that and then have a new way to restart their Rails application that's a bit more efficient. And for the next item, there's a documentation update for the Rails nodes. And this is a private API that is exposed to us. However, it's something that isn't really always recommended to use. One, there hasn't been much great documentation on it. And because it is considered a private API, things could change without warning. However, it is still something where you might have some really complex queries. And because of that, you do need to switch from something like Active Record to something a bit more powerful. And so the important thing to note here is that the documentation is simply in the source code. It's not something that's getting published to the Rails guides. However, if you are finding yourself having to create some more complex queries, then this could be a great option. Just do note that it could change in the future. So anytime you update your Rails application to a newer version, you would just want to make sure that those areas in your application hasn't broke. And for the next item, introduce test fixtures fixture paths. So this is deprecating the fixture path in favor for fixture paths. And this come in handy in cases where you're using Rails engines and you're wanting to bring in fixtures from those as well. So again, do take note that if you are using the fixture path within your tests, then that is getting deprecated and you are going to have to update that to fixture paths. And fixture paths by default is going to be an empty array. So you should just be able to push into there your current fixture path. And for the last item, delegate type supports customizable foreign type column. And when I first read this one, I was a bit confused because I really honestly didn't know about that delegated type feature. And so the delegated types is really cool. 
and it's something that I could have used many times. So I want to scroll down here to look at this example because this one resonates with me the most. So let's say we have a class entry and then we have a delegated type with some kind of polymorphic association. And so we have this entryable with a type, message, or comment. But then we want to get the title of that message or that comment. However, in this particular case, a message has an attribute called subject where it would be the equivalent title, but a comment has a content. It really doesn't have a title. So we're getting the content and then truncating it to 20 characters. And so I really like this because it could have saved me some headaches in the past with like a undefined subject for a comment class or something like that. But if we had just delegated the title to the entryable, which is a message or comment, and then within there we had a title for both of those, then in those situations, I wouldn't have had those errors. And so this pull request is adding a foreign type, and this can be handy in situations where maybe you have a different whatever underscore type column within your database, and you want to use that for these delegate types. It could be a different polymorphic association or something else like that. And now by having this foreign type, you would then be able to target that other column. And lastly, while it's not a change to Rails, RailsConf is coming up soon. And I do plan on going. I won't be speaking there this time. However, I am really excited to see you if you do want to stop by if you happen to see me and say hello. I plan to have a few stickers around, so be sure to say hello if you want some. And over the past week, there were 32 contributors to the Rails framework. So I just want to thank everyone, especially those first time committers who have helped make Rails a better framework. Well, that's all for this week's video coverage of This Week in Rails. Thanks for watching.